The cool thing about this game is it's actually really quite intellectual. Uh, it talks about Galian dialectics being the, the things that determine the course of history. Mm -hmm. Like breakpoints. Well, they're, they're sort of more competing philosophies or competing um, meme sets. So it would be, you know, for example, Adam Smith versus Karl Marx. It's a very intellectual spin on a, on a game. Oh, it is. So, speaking of spins, can we take a spin in the roadster? Yeah, let's go. Tell me about the car, Elon. This is when I drive to work. I actually dropped my kids off in the, in the Porsche because it's got two back seats. <laughs> But the other days of the week, when I'm not dropping the kids off, this is what I drive. And uh, it's just an awesome drive, particularly um, in a place like California, where you've got sunny, nice weather, and it's just made for a convertible. And because it's electric, you can hear the sounds of nature. It's actually a lot like sailing. Um, oh, interesting. It's not like power boating, where you've got this rumbling engine, and so you hear the rumbling engine, but you, you're not sort of in tune with the the sounds of nature as you are here, or where you can really hear the nuances of the music. How fast does this go? Uh, this goes uh, 0 to 60 in 3.7 seconds. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, well, of course. Amazing. see what I mean. So when the Model S comes out, will you then switch out of driving this car and drive a Model S tour? Yeah. I'll use this car for summer driving on the weekends and the Model S will become my daily driver. And then the advantage with the Model S is that I can then fit all the kids. Are they going to fight over who gets to sit in the very back? Did you ever drive in the station wagon that had rear facing yes. seats? Yes. Yeah, it was the... My family owned one. It was the best seat. Oh, I love that. If you're a kid, it was uh, had your own little world. Riddle me this. Okay. If you're going to suggest a beautiful drive somewhere in the area for someone who wanted to take a roadster out, where would you say they should drive? I think driving just before sunset um, on the Highway 1, just along, which is right on the coast, uh, towards Santa Barbara is really stunning. I wouldn't recommend driving the 405 like we're doing right now. <laughs> so what was your first car? The first car that I really bought and liked was an old BMW 320i that I bought for $1,400 and then fixed up myself. What year was it? It was a 1978 320i, wow. but, I, but I bought in 94. I, I had it for two years, and then literally one of the wheels fell off. What? Yeah. When you were because, driving? No, actually, it was during the start of my first company, and I'd lent the car to an intern uh, to go get something. And he gives me a call and, and says the wheel fell off the car. And you can see this like big scratch in the oh, road no. where the axle had, like, because it occurred while he was turning. Um, and I scrapped the car at that point. Um, and then the first car I bought where I actually had you know, more than a, a few thousand dollars um, was a 1967 Series 1 E-Type Jag. Which was... Um, Iconic. Iconic. Yeah. Actually, when I was, I guess, 17 or so, I was given a book of classic convertibles. And I looked through them all. And the one I liked the best was the, the E-Type Jaguar. And I said, well, if I can ever afford it, that's the car I'm going to get. And so that's why I bought it. That was like a bad girlfriend. No! It kept, it kept breaking down on me. Of course, all sorts of trouble. Uh, in fact, it broke down on the way back from the dealer. That's a bad sign. Yeah. When the venture capitalists invested in my first company, they gave me and my brother $40,000. It's kind of like, a, I don't know, an initial bonus or something. I spent 35 of it on the car. That's what everybody says about the E-Type. They say it's one of the best designs of, in history of a car, but it's totally unreliable and it will break your heart. Because, That's true. Because it breaks down all the time. Yes, it does. So it's kind of ironic that Tesla is an electric car company. SpaceX uses jet fuel, I think. Yeah, a really refined form of jet fuel. Is that a... liquid oxygen. Okay. Yeah. Is that a weird dichotomy for you that you have one company that doesn't use any gasoline and the other using a refined form of a fuel? I mean, I'm not really super hardcore about being ultra-environmental in all things because I think that you don't want to make life miserable. We want to create a better future 
but uh, a better future is not one where we are constantly depriving ourselves of things we love. I mean, the reason I, I wanted to create the, the Roadster was to show that you could have an electric car that's better than a gasoline car. And ultimately, I believe we can create a rocket that uses renewable fuels. Really? Fuel that's actually created from sunlight. I mean, sunlight and electricity. I don't mean like biofuel. That uses electricity, water, and carbon dioxide. But until we do, we must still have rockets. And so we need to figure out how to have the things we love and not destroy the world. That's the trick of it.